Hi guys! In this lesson, I will try to explain to you the structure and working principle of thyristors used in fast switching duty in power electronic circuits. Thyristors are made up of four semiconductors of type P and type N. Thyristors are abbreviated as SCR, which is the initials of the words silicon controlled rectifier. You see the shape of a thyristor on the left and the symbol on the right. Thyristors have three pins. One of them is anode, the other is cathode, the last one is gate. Their order is not always the same. Their location may change. They are denoted by the abbreviations A, C, and G. In its symbol, anode, cathode, and gate pins are like this. When we analyze its internal structure, we can see that it consists of a PNPN structure. So, how does the thyristor work? Let's see. The working principle of the thyristor is very similar to the transistor, but there are minor differences. When a low trigger current comes from the gate pin of the thyristor, a current flows from the anode pin to the cathode pin. This means that with a low trigger current from the gate pin, a high current between the anode and cathode is controlled. While the current here controlled in the transistor is generally very low current at milliamp level, different intensities of currents from milliamp to amp level are controlled in the thyristor. It is possible to come across different types of thyristors in daily life. For example, with the BT169 thyristor you see on the left, while a current of 500 milliamps can be controlled, with the BT152 thyristor in the middle, a current of about 13 amps can be controlled. With the thyristor on the right, a higher current of about 25 amps can be controlled. There are also different types of these thyristors that can be used at higher currents. To better understand the working principle of the thyristor, we can give the following example. Let's connect a lamp between the anode and cathode pins of the thyristor, as you see here, and check the flashing of this lamp. When we connect the lamp in this way, the lamp will not give light because no current flows through the thyristor. A low trigger current must come from the gate pin to trigger the thyristor. By making a connection to the gate pin in this way, we can make the thyristor triggered. When we press the button here, the thyristor will be triggered and the current flow will be provided from the anode to the cathode. Thus, the lamp will light up. Even if we release our hand from the button, namely disconnect the trigger from the gate pin, the lamp will continue to illuminate. This is one of the features that distinguishes the thyristor from the transistor. If you remember, the moment the trigger current was disconnected from the base terminal in the transistor, the transistor was current proof. But this is not the case here. The thyristor continues to trigger even if we stop triggering from the gate pin. So, how do we get the lamp off? Short circuit between thyristors anode and cathode is one of the methods. Let's connect a parallel button to the thyristor as here. When we press the button, the whole current will flow through the button as a short circuit and no current will flow through the thyristor. So, we can eliminate the triggering of the thyristor and make the lamp turn off. Of course, we gave an example of lamp control here. But instead of the lamp, the motor or other circuit element can also be controlled. This is how the thyristor's principle works. As we have mentioned hereby, thyristors are used as switching devices in power electronics. They are also used for direction and speed controls on AC and DC motor driver circuits. In addition, they are also used in AC power switching and power control, time relay, electronic contactors, etc. I hope this lesson was useful for you and you enjoyed it. Hope to see you in our next lesson. Goodbye.